Welcome everyone. This is Neelam Jyoti Nath. I'm a student of Lakhimpo College of Veterinary Science, Assam Agriculture University, Joying, North Lakhimpo, Assam. Today, I would like to explain details about immunomodulators. So, let us proceed. So, what are immunomodulators? All the drugs which modify immune response are generally categorized as immunomodulators. The immune system is made up of a network of cells, tissues, and organs to work together to protect the body. Immune system has an amazing capacity to deal with a complex array of antigens. Immune system has two components innate immunity and adaptive immunity. In innate immunity is also known as natural immunity, whereas adaptive immunity is also known as acquired immunity. Now we come to immunomodulators. Immunomodulators can be divided into two types, immunosuppressants and immunostimulants. Immunosuppressants are those drugs that inhibit or prevent the activity of the immune system. Immunostimulants are those drugs that modulate the immune system by stimulating the function of one or more of the system's components. Now coming to immunosuppressants. Most commonly used immunosuppressant drugs are glucocorticoids, calcineurin inhibitors, anti-proliferative or anti-metabolic agents and antibodies. They are used to control severe manifestations of allergic, autoimmune and transplant related diseases. So these are some of the examples of the following immunosuppressants. In the upcoming sections, we will be discussing about these drugs briefly. So coming to glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids have cyclopentanoper hydrophenantrine nucleus. They are synthesized in adrenal cortex from cholesterol. The cortical structure is given in this figure. Coming to pharmacokinetics, corticosteroids are effectively by oral routes. They are well absorbed systematically also from sites of local administration. And biotransformation occurs by hepatic microsomal enzymes and sulfate and glucuronide conjugation. Now coming to the mechanism of action. They induce redistribution of lymphocytes, which decreases the peripheral blood lymphocyte counts. In addition, they also downregulate key pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1, IL-2, IL-3, IL-6 and also TNF-alpha. This also increases number of RBC, platelets and neutrophils in circulation. This also enhances the rate of destruction of lymphoid cells. Now coming to uses of glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids are indicated in many clinical states like prevention and treatment of graft versus host disease, autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, replacement therapy for patients with adrenal failure such in case of Addison's disease and also in hypersensitivity states and in neoplastic diseases like Hodgkin's disease. Now these are the adverse effects of glucocorticoids. Growth retardation, avascular necrosis of bone, risk of infection, poor wound healing, cataract, hyperglycemia, hypertension. 
Now we come to calcineurin inhibitors. These are one of the most effective immunosuppressive agents. They target intracellular pathways and they block induction of cytokine genes. These are of two types, cyclosporin and tacrolimus, of which we will discuss in the upcoming sections. Now coming to cyclosporin. Cyclosporin is a naturally occurring compound found in fungus Buveria nevia. Talking about this, its structure, it contains cyclic polypeptide of 11 amino acids. Now coming to its pharmacokinetics. So cyclosporin is lipophilic and highly hydrophobic and can be administered intravenously or orally. It is widely distributed in the body, extensively metabolized in liver and to some extent in gastrointestinal tract and kidneys. Excretion mainly occurs through bile into feces and only 0.1% cyclosporine is excreted unchanged in urine. Now coming to the mechanism of action of cyclosporine. So cyclosporine inhibit antigen triggered signal transduction in T lymphocytes, which suppresses expression of many lymphokines, including IL-2 and apoptotic proteins. It also increases expression of TGFB. It forms a complex with cyclophilin. This complex binds and inhibit calcineurin. This prevents gene transcription and T lymphocytes fail to respond to specific antigen stimulation. Now we come to the uses and adverse effects of cyclosporine. So cyclosporine is used in organ transplantation, rheumatoid arthritis and in psoriasis cases, but it has also side effects. So renal dysfunction, hypertension and tremor are some of its adverse effects. Now we come to tacrolimus. So tacrolimus is a macrolide antibody produced by streptomyces sucubensis. It has higher potency than cyclosporine. Now we talk about the pharmacokinetics. So tacrolimus can be given orally as well as intravenously. It is metabolized by CYP3A4 and excreted in bile and plasma. The half-life of tacrolimus is 12 hours. The clinical efficacy as well as toxicity profile are similar to cyclosporin. Now we come to the mechanism of action of tacrolimus. So tacrolimus binds to a cytoplasmic immunophilin protein labeled FK506 binding protein, which is also known as FKBP. This complex inhibits calcineurin phosphatase. This inhibits signal transduction pathway leading to T cell activation and IL-2 transcription. So we come to now the uses and adverse effects of tacrolimus. So the uses are tacrolimus is used in prophylaxis of solid organ allograft rejection, bone marrow transplantation and atopic eczema. And the adverse effects of tacrolimus are nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, GI complaints, hyperkalemia, hyperglycemia, and diabetes. Now we come to the anti-proliferative and anti-metabolic drugs, some of which are sirolimus, everolimus, azithioprine, mycophenolate, mofetid. 
So serolimus is used in kidney transplantation. Everolimus is used in renal cell cancer. Azithioprine is used in prevention of organ transplantation and also in rheumatoid arthritis. While my mycophenolate mofetil is used in transplant. Now we come to antibodies. Presently, a wide variety of monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies are being used for prevention and treatment of transplant rejection. Now we are talking about antithymocyte globulin. So it is purified gamma globulin from the serum of rabbits immunized with human thymocytes. It binds to T lymphocytes and block them. Talking about monoclonal antibodies, they are made up of identical immune cells which are all clones. So these are the examples of monoclonal antibodies, anti-CD3 monoclonal antibodies. Example, neuronomab, anti-IL2 receptor or anti-CD25 antibodies. Example, daclizumab, anti-TNF reagents. Example, infliximab and anti-IL1 reagents. Example, anakinra. Now let's talk about immunostimulants. So, as discussed before, immunostimulants are the substances that modulate the immune system by stimulating the function of one or more of the system's components. So, immunostimulants are of two types, specific immunostimulants and non-specific immunostimulants. Specific immunostimulants, such as vaccines, stimulate an immune response to one or more specific antigenic types, whereas non-specific immunostimulants do not have any antigenic specificity, but can act as general stimulants that enhance the function of certain types of immune cells. Example, levamisole, thalidomide, bacillus calmate guirin, and recombinant cytokines. Recombinant cytokines are of two types, interferons and interleukin-2. Levamisol. It was synthesized as an anti-helminthic but later on found to restore immune functions by activating functions of B lymphocyte, T lymphocytes and monocytes. But it is now withdrawn from the market because of its risk for fatal agranulocytosis. Its only indication was as adjuvant therapy in rheumatoid arthritis and colorectal cancer. Thalidomide was synthesized in Germany from glutamic acid. It was withdrawn from the market because of its production of congenital malformations. There was a worldwide tragedy in the late 50s because of this and it was used in multiple myeloma. BCG is live attenuated live culture of bacillus of Kelmit and guerin strain of Mycobacterium bovis. It is in indicated for prophylaxis and treatment of carcinoma of urinary bladder. Now we come to recombinant cytokines. In recombinant cytokines, We'll discuss about interferons. So interferons are low molecular weight glycoprotein cytokines produced by host cells in response to viral infection. A, B and G interferons were initially identified by their antiviral activity, later recognized to have immunomodulatory activities. They bind to specific cell surface receptors that initiate a series of intracellular events like induction of enzymes, inhibition of cell proliferation, effect in the viral replication, and increase in phagocytosis.
Interferons are of many types, some of which are recombinant IFN A to B, IFN G L B, IFN B L A. So recombinant IFN A to B is obtained from Escheria coli and it is used in malignant melanoma and follicular lymphoma. IFN G L B is used in granulomatous disease and IFN B L A is used in antiviral and immunomodulatory properties. Its adverse reactions are flu-like symptoms that is fever, malaise, headache. In cardiovascular system, hypotension and arrhythmia. And in CNS, depression and altered behavior. Now we come to interleukin 2. Human interleukin 2 is produced by recombinant DNA technology in Escheria coli. It enhances cellular immunity with lymphocytosis, eosinophilia, thrombocytopenia and release of multiple cytokines. It is indicated for the treatment of melanoma and metastatic renal cell carcinoma. Now we have reached to the end of this presentation that is conclusion. So these are the sites of actions of selected immunosuppressive agents on T cell activations that we have discussed earlier. So conclusion. Immunology is one of the most rapidly developing areas of medical biotechnology research. Immunomodulation is a normalizing process which correct weak immune systems and temper immune systems that are overactive. Immunomodulators are becoming a viable adjunct to established modalities, offering a novel approach for the treatment of infectious disease in coming decades. So these are the references I took help from and made this presentation. So this was all about this video. Hope you all liked it. This is Neelam Jyotinath signing off. Thank you and take care.